what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. Cinema 4D just released 2025.1 and it has some great quality of life updates. So I wanted to give you my three favorite new features. We'll go through them quickly. So first things first is their new Boolean. They've added a lot of functionality to it and they've sped it up quite a bit as well. So let's go ahead and add a cube into here. We'll put that into the Boolean and we'll add a sphere into the Boolean as well. And we'll make that sphere a little bit bigger. And if we click that Boolean, we have operations of union, subtract, intersect, and without. We'll do subtract. And this is basically what you could do with the previous Boolean, right? Uh, but this one has a lot of new options. So before you would have to start making nulls or groups or uh, multiple bools, and it was also pretty slow. Um, now you can just stack things in here very easily and it sort of responds in a similar way to the volume builder So it's pretty intuitive So you can just literally throw anything into here and just add it to your stack and you can mess around with it And it's actually really fast, which is great too. a couple other great features You can now add a cloner into here, which is something that is actually super handy So if we make the sphere a little bit smaller make the cloner a little bit smaller and we pull it up here so now we can have this nice cloned uh, sphere on the top, making that grid. And finally, one last thing, which is really handy. Let's say that we want this cloner to be a different operation than the main Boolean operation. Well, now you have a tag for that. So let's right click on our cloner and under modeling tags, there is now a Boolean tag. And in that Boolean tag, you can override that operation with a different one just for this object. So we can change this one to intersect or we can change it to without and now it's punching a hole through there. All right, my second favorite feature, if you click this home button, this is the screen that you'll get when you just start up Cinema 4D, and we now have templates. You can just say, let's do a three-point lighting when we start up. Okay, we'll use their three-point lighting setup, and here you go, you're already set up. You can replace this with your object, and now we can add custom ones very easily. So the way to do that is just make whatever scene you want. So you just add something in your scene. We got a backdrop, maybe you put an HDRI, some lights, just the scene that you um, kind of start your projects with pretty often. And we'll just save that out. So I'll save this as studio template, I'll hit save. And then we'll go back to that home screen and we'll just click this add template plus and we'll click on that studio template and now we have it right here. It does auto generate a thumbnail, but we can change that if we want to. So I'm just gonna take a screen grab of this scene or you could do a render, whatever you want. And then under templates, there is a default scene here. And if we right click on it, we can click show details. And then down here, if you right click on this thumbnail and you can go to update preview from clipboard or from file. So I'll just upload a file here and I'll grab that screenshot. And now our thumbnail is updated. If we go back to that home screen, you can see that our studio template is now ready to rock and we have that nice thumbnail on there. And you can add as many of these as you want for different uh, scenarios. All right, so that's a great new feature. All right, so for the third thing that is a really nice quality of life, here is our scene just out of the gate here and I'm moving around it and it does take a little while to kind of clear up the grain here and see what we're uh, looking at here. All right, let's pause this and let's go to our settings. And if we go to our denoise section and twirl that down, you'll see that if we turn it on, we now have a new engine, which is the OIDN. This is uh, Intel's open image denoiser, and it is GPU accelerated, but it's also AI based, which I'm not sure exactly what AI based means, except for that if you put AI in anything, it'll sell better. Um, but hey, maybe this is the way to use AI, which is to speed things up for us and not take our jobs. So maybe it's okay. But here is the AI denoiser. And if you want more features for OIDN, you can go to the advanced tab and um, under denoising, there are a bunch more features here which you can get to, but this is just out of the gate. And now let me try moving around here and you can see that it has a very different vibe to it. It's sort of a painterly, like a smeary kind of a look, but it resolves very quickly. So you can kind of get an idea of what's happening in your scene a lot faster. It's actually pretty handy for setting up textures and camera moves and lighting and everything. So it's a huge quality of life upgrade and I would definitely check that out. All right, I'm gonna give you one last bonus one and this one's actually, it's probably the least sexy, but it's probably the most useful. If you go to output on your render settings, right now you have this option for custom frames available. So this is brand new under here. And this is if you wanna render some specific frames, but not your whole sequence. You can render say frame two comma, you could render frames four through nine comma, and you could render frame 21. And if you do that, it's just gonna render all these. So you can see under frames, it says eight frames and shows you which ones. So this is super handy, right? 
All right, so one other thing, let's go through one through 10. And I've already rendered this out, but if we hit render now, what's gonna happen is you'll get a pop-up and this is brand new. And it says, do you wanna render all and overwrite or render all without saving? Let's hit cancel. So that's pretty great, but here's one other feature which is really incredible. Let's say, this is just 10 frames, but let's say you rendered 350 frames and there was like a 15 frame stretch where something glitched out or a character was doing something wrong or you had to retexture something. And let's say that there's a few spots in your scene, you just go to your sequence and you delete a few of these because they rendered incorrectly. Now let's go back to rendering and without changing anything, let's just hit render. And now we have a third option, which is render only missing five frames. So it's gonna look at this and it's gonna realize that there's five frames missing and it's gonna give you the option to only do those, which is actually super incredible considering the amount of time that I've gone in here and had to render single frames out or batch frame tiny little sequences in the middle. It used to be an absolute pain in the neck to do. And now with this custom frame section and that extra option, things are just so much better. So those are some of my favorite updates to the 2025.1 update. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for checking out the Pixel Up. We'll talk to you next time. Ciao.